ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to do a video today about something that's quite personal to me. It's all about how to become a more confident driver. I never used to be this kind of person that I am that you see talking about cars and driving cars. In fact, I used to be the kind of person that was nervous to get in a car and go somewhere unless I knew exactly what lay ahead of me. It took me five times to pass my test. I passed it on the fifth time. And I think that rejection and how much I struggled and the silly mistakes I made from panicking led to a knock in my confidence. So even when I was allowed to go off on my own and drive, I still hated it. So here are some tips from me as someone who was not a confident driver on how to get that confidence. Number one, just drive. I know it sounds really stupid and that's probably the last thing that you want to do but just go for a drive, even if it's somewhere safe and comfortable that you know really well. Just drive, get used to it, point two. Go for a drive on your own, don't listen to other people. A problem for me was that there were so many people trying to tell me how to drive and how to be a more confident driver, and it wasn't working for it. It made me more stressed to have someone in the car with me. So one of the best things you can do is go for a drive on your own. Point three, force yourself to go to places that you wouldn't normally go to. I had to go to meetings uh, in Cheltenham, which meant driving on my own all the way to this scary place that involved motorways. And the first time I did it, it was terrifying. And I soon, you know, I soon got the hang of it after that one trip and had a great time in Cheltenham, got to see Nell, who lived nearby as well, and then I'd drive back. Uh, and I realised that the whole the whole idea of motorways and driving a long distance isn't actually as scary as you think. Actually now, driving on a motorway is nothing to me and I would happily go for a three hour drive just to have dinner with a friend and then drive back the same night. I'm, I'm so cool with that shit now. Point four, don't let anyone give you shit. If you're out on the road and someone's up your ass because you're going slowly, because you don't feel confident enough to go any faster, then they're a dick. Sure, when you go on the road, you'll probably see someone that's a knob. You know what? Slow down some more and really fucking piss them off. They have no right to do that to you and they are wankers. Point five, I think, take further training. If you're not confident on the road, maybe you need some extra lessons. And I'm not saying that you need more driving lessons. You've passed a test, well done. But maybe a pass plus to get you more, more used to dual carriageways and motorways, if that's your problem. Or if it's just general driving confidence, go out and do something fun. Get someone to take you on track and throw a car around a track or do a skid pan lesson. Not only will you have a whale of a time and probably find some untapped skill at racing, you'll learn things about car control that you're not gonna learn on the road. I went on track with Adam Morgan from the British Touring Car Championship and he took me out in a Renault Clio Sport and we drove around Rockingham. And in that brief lesson from him, I learned so much about handling a car and changing gear into corners and braking distances and what happens when you brake when you're turning and that kind of thing. It's definitely translated into real world life. And I'm not talking about driving fast on country roads, which is something that I like doing. I'm so aware now that I'm safer breaking into a corner rather than on a corner, which you should all know anyway and should probably be part of tests. Point six, learn to park. I put off using the skills I'd learn in driving lessons of reverse bay parking and parallel parking for so many years because I hated it. Things changed when my friend Ali passed her driving test and was reverse bay parking everywhere. And I thought if she can do it as a new driver, then I as a motoring journalist and video car presenter on YouTube must be able to do it. I had a chance to park very near to somewhere that I needed to be, but it was in a tiny space between two cars. And I thought, no, I've got this. I'm not this person anymore who's scared of parallel parking. And I just went straight into this space. Point seven, don't think about the instructions. Now, I don't know if this is just something that worked for me, but when I was told to pull up alongside of space, if you're reverse bay parking, to turn the wheel full lock, to drive forward, and then to drive back in. That kind of going right, now I need to do this, and then I need to turn that way and go. I just couldn't get my head around it, and parallel parking was even worse. When I started thinking about it in terms of drive your car backwards into a space, or put your car so sideways into a space, it became a lot easier. And the thing that made me realize that that's how my brain 
works was roller derby. In roller derby, to pass level one with the Norfolk Broads, you have to be able to walk backwards on your skates. And it wasn't until one of the coaches said, just walk backwards. I went, oh, what, like this? And I just walked backwards. I was thinking about it too hard, and that made me realise that I'm doing the same with parking. Confidence is tough when it's been knocked by something really specific but the, the thing the best thing you can do is to move on and i wish there had been something like this out there for me when i was the least confident driver ever telling me that practice will make you more confident not listening to assholes who think they know everything will make you more confident and ignoring dicks on the road will also make you more confident i think past me would be very pleased with how far i've come road trips are a huge part of my life and when i was in america four years ago five years ago jesus fucking christ that epic america road trip was five years ago i had the chance to drive the car and i said that i didn't want to because it was terrifying and i wish i had now so thankfully, when I go to America in October, I'm gonna get my hands on a delicious piece of American car, and I'm gonna be driving that all around Texas. Thank you everyone, I hope this has helped someone. If it has helped you, or if you've enjoyed watching it for any other reason, please subscribe to the channel, it's always appreciated, and check out some more of my videos, whether they're car reviews, or rants, or lots of fun motorsport stuff. Thank you everyone, goodbye.